incredible pleasure to have you, Sam Sorbo, with us here on Blaze TV. You're an actress, you're an author, and you're a homeschool mom. So welcome to the Economic War Room. Thank you so much for having me. Homeschool yeah. advocate, I should say. Homeschool advocate. Ah, I should have said it that way. I, I want to tell you, that's important. Right now, people are finding that they're homeschooling, and it's very unexpected. The uh, whole nation is homeschooling. The Get whole nation. Newsome who is no friend to homeschoolers, is advocating for homeschooling. Absolutely, and it's for uh, health and safety reasons, but there are a whole lot of other reasons to be a homeschooler, right? Yes, I'm really, I have to say, I'm, I'm very encouraged and I'm hopeful that a lot of people through this experience of what I'm calling accidental homeschooling um, are, are, are now going to consider that maybe this is the best option for educating their youngsters. Well, it's certainly something my wife and I have done for now 13 years. We've got one in college and we have one uh, junior in high school. And so we're thrilled. You know, it's not changed our routine nearly as much as most other people. It's what we're used to. But how do you start? Someone who's just now being thrust into this accidental homeschooling, what, what are the things they should do? What are three steps that people should take to homeschool? So, um, and I, I, I've started a whole video a collection of tips and, and tricks to get you started on your way. The first thing that I advocate is that you don't take it too seriously. This is a temporary thing, okay? So don't think that your whole life has changed now forever. The second thing that I want parents to understand is that the school day does not have to be seven and a half or eight hours. And so uh, depending on the age of your child, your commitment to the day should be basically less than three hours because younger kids really only need to, to work on reading, writing, arithmetic, you know, the three R's. Uh, they only really need a couple of hours a day, maybe three hours a day. Older kids need longer, they should be working longer, they have longer attention spans, but the fact is you don't have to stand over them with a ruler waiting for them to finish what they're doing or correcting them as they go. And so for the parents, it, it isn't that big of a lift. In fact, when you think of the trade-off, and, and I've often said this, that what I traded when I brought my kids home from school and started to homeschool them, I no longer had the packing the lunch in the morning, the getting them ready for school, the yelling at them, where's your sneaker? The <laughs> Save driving, a lot of time. In the car, driving to school, waiting in the drop-off line, waiting in the pickup line to, to pick them up from school. Like I skipped all of that, and the kids themselves get to skip a lot of the the shenanigans that happen in school, the roll call, the walking the class to the library, sure. um, all of that stuff. And so they can be more focused in their education and concentrate more on the learning. Um, right. So that was number two. Did I, did I do three, the top three things about home education? Oh, you don't try to make your house look like a school. You're free. You can do, you can do education any way you choose. It's so freeing to be out, out of the institution. Oh, absolutely. Now, a lot of kids are not uh, right now completely out of the institution, though. A lot of uh, students are taking online classes from their teachers. Do you have any suggestions for parents when they're dealing with the kids taking the online classes? I do. First of all, I really encourage parents to sit in on those. Don't just put your child in front of a computer and say, okay, do your class and pay no attention. Really pay attention because lately in schools we've seen a trend for everything to move online and for the schools to say that parents can't have access to it because it's online and so you can't see what's going on. Well here you have the opportunity to see what exactly they're teaching your child and you may not like what you see. I'm just saying you may find that you actually have a a difference of opinion on some of the things that they're trying to teach your children. Um, so I would, I would really encourage parents, please pay attention. And if you see anything that you disagree with, send it my way because I'm, I'm collecting information uh, because I've, I've come up against this so often now with parents not being allowed to know exactly what their children are being taught. Um, so you have, a, you have a really unique opportunity right now. In fact, Kevin, I was talking earlier today, parents have been cut loose like completely orphaned, set set out to see with their kids 
with no instruction now finally some of the some of the schools are sort of getting online the private schools I've heard went online like they just made the switch and they went to online public schools I know of at least some public schools that aren't coming online until March 31st excuse me why why is it taking them four weeks or three weeks to put things online for the students do they not know what they're planning to teach the children well you know that that concerns me because I sent you a copy of the Epic Times article. It says professors worry about new scrutiny as CCP virus forces classes online. That's Epic Times. What are they worried? They're worried about exactly what you said. They're worried that the parents are going to find out what they've been teaching. It will expose them and show, I think, how little value there is to some levels of education. And, and even when we trust them to really good people, and there's some really fantastic teachers, the curriculum that they've been given top down from the system, right. whether it's new math or common core or whatever, is just difficult. The reason, one of the reasons we're homeschooling is when my daughter came home with uh, new math and she, it was, she got the problem right the wrong way and they, she got in trouble for it. And it was, you know, uh, 17 plus 22 plus 75, count the tens. Well, she actually got the actual answer. And she got it, and she had it counted wrong. And she was so confused and hated math until we took her into homeschooling. And now she excels, leading her class. So this is uh, an example in my book of Common Core Math. This is how they do the standard. This is in, in, in lieu of the standard algorithm for multiplication. And um, you, I mean, you have to see this. They are purposely making math more complicated in order to dissuade children from pursuing math. Why? That's crazy. Because math is logic. And they don't want children to be allowed to think. They don't want them to be capable of thought. And that's why now you have these young people who can't entertain a thought that disagrees with them. They literally can't entertain. Ah, la, 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 la. They want to banish the language. Now, this is a great book. It's They're Your Kids, uh, An Inspirational Journey from Self-Doubter to Homeschool Advocate. It's an excellent book. You've got some great suggestions in there. I learned things. We've been homeschooling for 13 years, and as I looked at it, my wife looked at it, we learned things. You've got another book that I picked up, Teach from Love, a school year devotional for families, which I also encourage, because that's one of the things that we love about um, homeschooling is the fact that we can incorporate Christian curriculum. And that's something that would be forbidden at the public schools, uh, but something that we've done um, and, and really enjoy. Well, let's talk about if we're homeschooling three or four hours a day uh, for the younger ones, and maybe a little longer for those that are in the higher grade levels, but they're doing a lot of self-study at that point where they do a lot of reading and a lot of preparation. But we have extra time. What are some fun things you can do with the extra time that you have? Oh, my gosh. Well, f well, first of all, so, yeah, you're talking about the amount of time that the children are working on their studies uh, versus, and I just want to be clear, the parents aren't working on those. So I, talked to, I talk about this in one of my videos. I had three young children, so first, third, and fifth grade, and we'd sit down at the kitchen table, and I'd bring my computer, and I'd help them a little bit, and I'd do some emails, and then I'd help that one a little bit, and then I'd do some emails. So you can get stuff done. You don't have to be entirely focused on your young children. And then, of course, the older children are self, you know, they might not be self-starters because they've been spoon-fed all this time in the public schools, but you can engage them to become more self-starters. And you say, here's a book. I, I recommend going through some classic literature if, you're, if your uh, school hasn't given you assignments yet. Um, I recommend going online and looking at some documentaries. That's fun to do. In fact, uh, my husband has a documentary called Before the Wrath, which is um, a, it's, it's a non-religious look at the last book of the Bible. And it's trending number one on Amazon in documentaries. But the amazing thing is it's trending number nine on Amazon in overall films, which is amazing. But that is amazing. we're living in the, in the era of COVID-19 and everybody's going, ah, oh, pestilence or whatever, right? Um, so you can do that. You can, um, I, I like to, to recommend cooking together because you're in the house. Cooking with young kids involves math, measuring, um, kids love to cook because they it's love getting fun. their hands dirty and it's fun. 
and you can actually sit down with your kids and like design a menu and um, you can search up all kinds of recipes online so that's fun and of course all the outdoor exercise if, if you have the the ability to go out of the house with the family take long walks I'm really encouraging parents to not look at this as a, as a loss or a limitation but as um, as an opportunity this is yep. an opportunity for you to get to know your kids even better to forge a, a stronger a more meaningful relationship with your teenagers engage them in conversation make lunch dates with your kids say today I'm gonna have lunch with you and we're at 1230 we're gonna sit down for lunch what do you want for lunch um, you know I'll make it or or whatever and then engage them and find out what they're interested in I was talking with a gal today um, she said that her son she's gearing him up to go to college but he's got a learning deficiency and so we were talking about that and I said well what makes you think that he should go to college you know parents we need to take a step back because our education system has really um, manipulated us uh, when 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 we talk about education K through 12 is engaged in college prep and career readiness, correct? Yeah. So let's examine that for a minute. Career readiness. Well, that means that you're going to have a career. How many kids graduate college with a career? Not a whole lot. Right. What's college prep? College prep is gearing you up to go spend a bunch of money in college to buy an education at school, right, at college. But here's the thing. Maybe that's not what you're, maybe that's not all it's cracked up to be. And in fact, it isn't anymore. And it's sort of like, um, I, need a, I need a new form of transportation. I want a car. So I go to a dealership and I say, here's $80,000. And I need a new form of, of transportation, basically a career. I'm not sure what the career is going to be, but that's what I need. And then I end up with a bicycle. Yeah. And you go, but I thought that I was getting a car. Yeah, but you didn't specify. $80,000 for a bicycle. Yeah, so but, you know, you're right. College is going to transform. It's going to change. All these students coming home, people are going to wonder, is this valuable? And when they find out what they're, they're paying good money for their children to be indoctrinated, a lot of parents will say, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. And we're in a new economy. So I think you make a lot of good points. One of the things, Sam, I want to I want to share uh, with our audience, and I think it's important, is we need to have hope. I mean, you talk about taking dates with your kids. You know, one of the things that it, when your pantry is emptier than maybe it would be because you can't shop as readily or easily, uh, you get creative in your cooking, and so uh, c coming up with new concoctions and so forth. But it's also a time with the teach from love, so you can get closer to your kids. And then you and Hercules have uh, have written another book, True Faith, which is about how couples can draw closer. This should be a time. The, the, the enemy of our faith would take this as a time to destroy families. And, to, you know, you're cooped up together and so forth. But it doesn't have to be so. We can actually, using the resources you provided, plus the Bible, plus all of the great things. Um, so I want to encourage and give you, a, give you a last word to share. But I want to encourage people, there's true faith. I want to encourage people, don't just let your kids sit down and look at videos. Watch a movie together. Yes. Put it on the TV. Watch it together. Don't have them off you doing just YouTube or searching the Internet. Do family activities. And watch the classics. We just watched uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and I discovered that I had not seen it before, and it's brilliant, and it's funny, and my kids, who are all now young teens, loved it. Um, because it's so entertaining and it is not partisan at all. There's no partisan politics in the movie. It's just a fantastic movie. So look at some of the old classics, the things that you wouldn't otherwise do. Clean out the closet that you've been putting off and you don't want to do, but engage your kids in doing that, right? This is a time for families to draw together. I honestly, I think this is a tremendous opportunity to get back to families. And, I, um, and so I'm very optimistic. I absolutely agree with you. So, you know, we all pray for our president. We pray for the nation. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for the families. Uh, there are a lot of things that we need uh, to, to take out of this. Uh, one thing I'm going to recommend that families get together and watch is our upcoming episode with you and Kevin 
uh, in the Economic War Room. We did it phenomenal. We talk about the movies that you've made, some of your life career choices, God's Not Dead, and you know a whole lot of uh, Let There Be Light, a lot of uh, amazing family entertainment that you and your husband have been producing and, and presenting to us. Now is an opportunity to go back and, and, and watch that. And I will encourage everybody, watch our episode in the Economic War Room with Kevin and Sam Sorbo. Sam, it is such a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.